All right, so here we are with the Laws of Signs notes for Chapter 10, Section 5. And our objective is to use these Laws of Signs. Uh, cosines is actually going to be our next lesson uh, to solve triangles. So uh, here we are with the formula for the Law of Signs. And basically, it's just a bunch of proportions. So notice that once you take the sine of A, if you put that over A, uh, that's going to equal the sine of B over B and sine of C over C. Now, the bigger things that are happening here is that we have capital A's and B's and C's, and they actually mean something different. So if you remember back to geometry, capital letters represent your vertexes and lowercase letters, which actually are the same as across from them, the angle there, the lowercase letters are side lengths. And so angle B, for instance, is across from side B. Angle A, the capital letter, is across from side A, which is the lowercase letter. So the idea of the law of signs is that you are going to use trig in order to solve a non-right triangle. So again, the basic idea of this is to use trigonometry, which up until now has only been allowed to use in right triangles, with non-right triangles. All right. So in that case, uh, filling in each of our pieces here, you can use the law of sines to solve a triangle if you are given two angle measures and any side length, and then also two side lengths and a non-included angle measure. So if you remember back to uh, geometry, when we talked about this, uh, we are talking about technically angle, side, angle, two angle measures and a side length, um, or angle, angle, side. Uh, in this next one, it says two side lengths and a non-included angle. And so that's side, side, angle. Um, and of course, when we did side side angle in geometry, uh, that was more represented as HL. But of course, we can't do HL, which stands for hypotenuse leg, because that would mean we had a right triangle. And we don't have a right triangle. Remember, these are non-right triangles. So either way, we're going to use the law of signs in these examples and then the ones on the assignment. So taking a look, we are trying to find the length of DF. All right, so this is the one that we are trying to find here, and we are given its opposite angle, so we could probably set up a proportion here, and then we're given this angle in its opposite side. So you always need to have these um, one set of angle and side in order to be able to solve these proportions. So if we set up what each of these might equal, uh, we could say that this is angle, uh, sorry, side A, uh, sorry, angle A, and this could be side A. This could be B, and this could be side B. And so if we set it up the way that the formula has, you're going to be able to take sine of the A angle divided by the A length, and that's going to equal sine of the B angle over the B length. So if we plug those in, uh, sine of A is going to be 32 degrees that we're plugging in, in accordance with A is 32 in our diagram. And then we're going to put that over side length A, which we don't know, but we do know that it could represent an X. All right, then the next piece is sine of B. And so we're going to do sine of what we've said is our B angle, which is 105. And that's going to be over our side length, which is 18. So again, basically you take sine of whatever angle it is and put it over its opposite side length. So you don't necessarily need to label them as A, B, and C as the diagram has or as the formula has, but it's nice to be able to kind of transition between one and the other. So now we go ahead and solve this. Um, and of course, proportions you'd solve by doing cross multiplication. But before we go into that, we might want to change this um, and this into their decimal values. So we're going to rewrite this. So that we determine what sine of 32 is and of course this is 32 degrees and so in your calculator you want to be in a mode of degree so make sure that's highlighted so we're going to find out what sine of 32 degrees is 
and that's 0.5299. That's going to still be over our x value. And then our next fraction of sine over sine of 105, so sine of 105 is 0 0.9659, and that's over 18. So a quick way of doing this, if you remember, uh, is just multiplying the two that are values. So we're going to multiply 18 times 0 0.5299, and then divide by the third digit, and that will equal your x. So again, what I would do is 18 times 0 0.5299, and then take that result and divide by 0 0.9659, and that would get me my x. So 18 times 0 0.05, sorry, point. 5299 divided by 0.9659 leaves us with 9.8749. And so that is the x length that we are missing. And remember that x length is also df, the side. All right. So if you don't uh, like that idea, one other way of solving this is to understand that these come from uh, cross-multiplying. So technically 0 0.5299 times its cross-multiplier, which was 18, and that's going to equal x times its cross-multiplier, 0 0.9659. And then you would divide both sides by 0 0.9659 because then you would cancel and have x equals and then you would divide this side by 0 0.9659 and so hopefully you can see that that is the same as what we did here 18 times 0 0.5299 and then eventually divided by 0.9659 so you would end up with 9.8749 again this is just an alternate solving method. If you don't understand the, um, take the two that are numbers diagonally and multiply them and then divide by the third digit. So either way, you get the same value. All right. Our next example is finding the measure of angle S. So now we're finding the angle and not the side length but that is perfectly doable as well. So uh, to start us off, I'm going to do the same thing as I did before and label things as A and B. So I'm going to uh, actually make this A and then this side length A. And then since we're talking about S, I'm going to make this B and this side length B, just so that I can use the formula a little bit more directly. All right, so that means that I'm going to do sine of A over side length A and sine of b over side length b. So we'll go ahead and fill in each of those pieces. And that means that uh, a is actually 75 degrees. a, the side length, is 7. b, the angle measure, we don't know what it is. And b, the side length, we know that that is 5, which of course looks like an s. All right, so then we're going to take the time to find those values. So sine of 75. Again, it is degrees, so we're in degree mode. So we're going to end up with 0 0.9659 over 7. And that's going to equal sine of B over 5. So taking a look at how we did it last time, we're going to multiply 5 times 0.9659, so this diagonal and then divide by that last digit. So again, I'm going to do 5 times 0 0.9659, and then that quantity is going to be divided by 7. That is, however, only going to be equal to sine of b. So please don't pretend that that's just b, 
because that means we're going to have to do a little bit more solving to get what actually the angle is. So in that case, 5 times 0.9659 divided by 7 leaves you with 0 0.6899 equal to sine of B. And so we don't actually have B yet because we need to undo this sign in order to get our B. So uh, let's see. I'm going to go sideways here. And so that means that I'm going to take the sign of both sides in order to cancel out this sign. But that means I'm going to take the sign inverse, if you remember back to our previous lesson. So sign inverse of both sides. And remember that sine inverse of 0.6899 will be our angle measure because sine inverse of sine cancels the signs and you're left with B. So B is going to equal the sine inverse of 0.6899. So if we take the sine inverse, remember that's second and then sine, and then plug in that decimal that we had, which I have as my answer, my previous answer, we're going to get 43.6245. But does it say anything about rounding? No. Generally what happens is they'll ask you to round to a whole degree measure, so we'll just say it's uh, 44. So angle B is about 44 degrees. And remember that B we already had replaced with S, so we can say that that equals S as well. All right, so 44 degrees. So that's our notes for today. Um, a lot of algebra, and of course, if you kind of know how to do that cross multiplying pretty quickly, you don't necessarily need to have each of these steps. It would have just been from here to uh, the equal of sine and then the inverse. So again, up here, it would have just been equal and then you could have found the um, answer. So of course it's notes and I'm showing all my steps. All right, so that's 10.5, which is law of signs and hopefully you can do the assignment now.